This is Optimal Startup Daily, episode 290, Seven Rituals You Should Steal from Extremely Creative People, part one, by Mark Chernoff of markandangel.com. And I'm Dan, I'm your host and personal narrator here on Optimal Startup Daily, and I'm here every single day reading to you from some of the best blogs on entrepreneurship, Today, I've got a bit of a longer post, so I'm gonna read the first half for you right now and then finish up the rest tomorrow. So with that, let's get right to part one from Mark as we optimize your life. Seven Rituals You Should Steal from Extremely Creative People, part one by Mark Chernoff of markandangel.com. Quote, creativity is just connecting things. When you ask creative people how they did something, they feel a little guilty because they didn't really do it. They just saw something and connected the dots. It seemed obvious to them after a while. Steve Jobs. Over the years, through our coaching practice and premium course, Angel and I have spoken with dozens of entrepreneurs, artists, and creative types about their unique rituals and routines. The really nice thing is that we often learn just as much from our clients as they do from us. They tell us about some of the most incredibly creative ideas and projects imaginable, and we teach them how to fine-tune the process of getting from where they are to where they want to be. A good coach-client relationship is truly a win-win. Today, I want to share seven of the most common rituals we've seen repeated by the most creative people we've worked with. I've often said that creativity can't be contained, that creative inspiration and ideas arise suddenly out of nowhere and then fail to show up when we need them most. And while that may be true for a specific idea, when you look at the broader picture, you realize that sustained creativity, having lots of creative ideas over time, doesn't come from a flash of brilliance or a single moment of inspiration. It comes from a consistent set of rituals that serve as the bedrock for getting remarkable things done. One, engage deeply in meaningful pursuits. Marcus Aurelius once said, stop whatever you're doing for a moment and ask yourself, am I afraid of death because I won't be able to do this anymore? One of our coaching clients brought this quote to my attention about a decade ago. Today, I have it pinned to the bulletin board in my office. It stops me from squandering my most precious resource, my time. Creativity as both a lifestyle and a profession is a daring adventure and a truly rewarding one. To thoroughly love what you do while also being fulfilled financially and emotionally is an aspiration and a challenge. That aspiration can become a reality, but it takes lots of hard work, dedication, and some luck that eventually comes from persistently doing the right things, which is why you must remind yourself on a daily basis of what's actually meaningful to you and fully commit to the actions that yield progress in that area of your life. Two, set up triggers that get you into the rhythm for a routine of creating. Maya Angelou only wrote in small hotel rooms. Jack Kerouac made sure to touch the ground nine times before sitting down to write. And many of the artistic clients we've worked with over the years have done everything from meditating to singing to running to even doing two-hour-long workouts immediately prior to working on their creative projects. For example, take a look at our client Faye's morning routine. Here's what she recently told us. Quote, I begin every day with one simple ritual. I wake up at 6 a.m., put on workout clothes, walk outside my downtown San Francisco home, hail a taxi, and tell the driver to take me to my gym. I work out for an hour and 45 minutes, and then I take a leisurely 15-minute jog back home. The important part of the ritual is not the training I do at the gym. What's important is getting in that cab every morning and getting the day started in the right direction. The rest just falls into place. I get home feeling good and ready to work. End quote. Think about your days. How are they structured? What triggers your creative and productive mind? Are you consciously structuring your days with this trigger in mind? Whether it's waking up early, working in a specific location, or hitting the weights first thing in the morning, you need to find a trigger that gets you into rhythm, your rhythm. When you design a healthy daily routine that starts automatically every morning, you save lots of mental energy for the creative thinking that comes naturally when you find yourself in your rhythm. Through this personalized routine, you will bring out your most intuitive work. Of course, your routine will change occasionally due to evolving circumstances. The idea is that you make the necessary adjustments and maintain a routine that works, one that maintains the necessary triggers and rituals to develop and nurture your creative mind and to ultimately do the work necessary to get you from where you are to where you want to be. Read The War of Art. Three, spend daily downtime daydreaming. Creative types know that despite what their grade school teachers likely told them, daydreaming is anything but a waste of their time. 
While structured routines are important for the actual process of creating, our minds need downtime filled with the freedom to wander. Neuroscientists have found that daydreaming involves the same brain processes associated with imagination and creative thinking. According to psychologist Rebecca L. McMillan, who recently co-authored a research paper titled Ode to Positive Constructive Daydreaming, daydreaming can aid in the creative incubation of ideas and solutions to complex problems. Perhaps that's why we sometimes get our best ideas while taking a long, hot shower. Four, schedule in new experiences. When they're not daydreaming in their downtime, creative types love to expose themselves to new experiences, sensations, and states of mind. This willingness to stretch themselves is a significant predictor of their creative output because creative growth always begins at the end of your comfort zone. Of course, a big part of this happens inside a routine when you're in rhythm and working hard to stretch your creative and intellectual muscles. But new experiences help balance out your routines. They force you to think differently. So make an effort to try something new at least once a week. It can be a whole new activity or just a small experience, such as talking to a stranger. Once you get that ball rolling, many of these new experiences will open doors to life-changing perspectives you can't even fathom right now. And with a strategy of continuous, small, scheduled steps into new experiences, you are able to sidestep the biggest barrier to thinking outside the box. Fear. Five. Hear that in tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled Seven Rituals You Should Steal from Extremely Creative People by Mark Chernoff of markandangel.com. Let's pretend for a moment that you're about to launch a campaign. It tested well and your entire team is happy. Everything's going according to plan, except for that one thought in the back of your head. How do I ensure the people I want to target will be in the mindset to receive my message? The answer, LinkedIn. Because when you market on LinkedIn, Your message reaches people who are ready to do business. And that means your advertising campaign will work as hard as it can as soon as you launch it. And LinkedIn has also been tremendously helpful for us here at the Optimal Network, keeping us updated with the latest podcast trends shared by thought leaders on the platform. LinkedIn makes finding them really easy. We narrow them down to their job titles, industries, and seniorities. It's perfect for when we want to connect with them or even run ad campaigns depending on our short and long-term business goals. So do business where business is done. Get a $100 advertising credit toward your first LinkedIn campaign. Visit linkedin.com slash OSD. That's linkedin.com slash OSD. Terms and conditions apply. And thank you to both Mark and Angel. They write about a wide variety of topics, so you're gonna hear them narrated across a bunch of our shows. Mark and Angel Chernoff are New York Times bestselling authors, professional coaches, full-time students of life, admirers of the human spirit, and have been recognized by Forbes as having one of the most popular personal development blogs. Through their blog, their books, course, and coaching, they've spent the past decade writing about and teaching proven strategies for finding lasting happiness, success, love, and peace. The goal of their blog is to give you the tools to identify and transform the limiting beliefs that keep you stuck. They have somewhere around a thousand articles on happiness, productivity, emotional intelligence, relationships, and general self-improvement, and have over 200 million page views and 200,000 subscribers since 2006. And again, they are featured across a bunch of our shows, so check out the other podcasts in our network for more from Mark and Angel. All right, hope you are having a great weekend if you're listening in real time. That's it for our show today. I thank you so much for being a subscriber, and I'm gonna see you back here tomorrow. And that's where we're gonna finish up this post and where your optimal life awaits.